Welcome, friends, to this daily devotion. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter Tide. I'm Pastor Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we serve this beautiful church, the United Methodist Church of New Lenox, and we welcome you to this time where we can gather together across time and space and internet bandwidth and focus on the divine mystery, the empty tomb, the good news that he is risen, he is risen indeed. What does resurrection mean for you, for me, for our world and our communities? Let us keep that in mind as we take a deep breath and come together in the presence of God. Hear the affirmation and our petition. Truly, one who touches you touches the apple of my eye. See now, I am going to raise my hand against them, and they shall become plunder for their own slaves. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Zechariah 2, 8 and 9 Why do you look down upon the treacherous, and are silent when wicked swallow those more righteous than they? Habakkuk 1, 13 Our theme this week is Receiving Direction. Our theme last week, of course, was going where we aren't expecting to or being taken places where we don't want to go. This week is all about receiving direction. And so hear these words from the author of our book, A Guide to Prayer from All Who Seek God, or one of the authors, Bishop Reuben Job. According to the final verses of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus met the disciples to give them direction and the promise of of his presence. The Bible is filled with stories of people who received direction from God. Through the centuries, faithful disciples have discovered some essential qualities for the life and stance that permits us to receive God's direction. Practicing a preference for God and God's will is the place to begin. That means putting God ahead of all else in our list of priorities. This is not the way to receive direct this is not the only the way to receive direction, but also the way to a joyful and faithful walk with God every day. Preference for God profoundly affects our lives. We not only receive direction but find our lives transformed as we turn to God and seek to walk with God. This kind of companionship with God leads to a life of trust and confidence in God that permits us to receive and respond to God's whisper of direction. Do you want to live increasingly in God's presence, receive God's direction, and walk in God's presence? Being practicing, begin practicing a preference for God, and you will discover a growing capacity to receive and respond to God's direction. For your life. God bless this reading today. We often talk about how do I know God's will? How do I know where God is calling me? And I like how uh, Bishop Job frames this. Begin practicing a preference for God. In other words, put God first. In other words, our general rules in the Methodist church, do no harm, do good, Attend upon the ordinances of God. Another way we talk about that in Methodism is our membership vows. Prayers, presence, gifts, service, witness. Are you communicating with God? That's prayer. Are you talking to God? Are you present? Are you making God a priority in your week? You are by being here with me. Are you giving? Is your pocketbook, you know, we often joke, look at your checkbook or your online bank statement. That will tell you where your priorities are. Is your priority God and God's kingdom and building up God's kingdom and other people? Is charity and generosity part of your value system? Service, do you serve in ways big and small and everywhere in between? Is that a priority? Have you taken what you've been given and are you using it to its fullest, your time, your treasures, and your talents? Or your presence, prayers, gifts, service, and then witness? Are you sharing the story? It's really not that hard. We have all kinds of stories 
from scripture and from the tradition of our church and great uh, mothers and fathers and parents in our tradition who have taught us what it means to follow God. It taught us what God is calling all of us to be part of. God is calling all of us into discipleship. God is calling all of us into the kingdom. God is calling all of us to encourage each other, to lift each other up, to love each other, to build and to be creative in that love. God's calling all of us to do that. Particularly, there might be specific calls God is calling us. And the way we know that is by being intentional and focused on God. Everything that I've done in terms of answering my call to ministry has been surrounded by prayer, by being present with God, by opening myself up, by trusting, by talking to other people, by being run through the the gauntlet a few times when it comes to ministry and even foster parenting and even being married and all those kind of things, choosing a school to go to. There's pushback and people ask questions and that's good. There's accountability there. So how are you engaging with God? Practicing a preference for God so that you can hear what God's calling you to do. Now, one of these things comes from today's scripture, and that's th- this is one of the, the penultimate calls for all those who consider themselves Christian or disciples of Jesus Christ. And that comes from Matthew 28, 18, and 20. This is the end of the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus has met with his disciples several times. He has now gathered them together and he is giving them his final instructions on earth. This is according to the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus came near and spoke to them. I have received all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Look, I myself will be with you every day until the end of the present age. Amen. We call this the Great Commission. This is something that all Christians, all disciples of Jesus Christ, should partake in. In the United Methodist Church, we call this our mission or vision statement, and we phrase it like this, that our mission What we're called to do is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. There is a goal, a vision for making disciples. As we change life by life, the world gets better, ideally. (laughs) The problem is we've not been real good at the making disciple part. Uh, We've been okay at various times in our history of getting people to church, scaring people so they come to church, all those kind of things, having people say, oh, I kind of believe in God. But actual disciple making, what the, what is a disciple? Someone who, according to Matthew here at the, the end of Matthew, does what Jesus commands. And what does Jesus command? Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. Fully engage in the practice of love. That is the big call. That's why for John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, the, 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 two, the, the two kind of foundational scriptures are the great commandment and the great commission. The great commandment to love God, to love neighbor, the great commission to share that love with others, to make disciples to, to bring them into the household, to, to welcome them in. It, it's not about going out to the country and setting up a tent and, and, and having an altar call and, and then everybody goes about their business. It's not about building a giant temple and, and, and having the best worship band and the best drama and the best technology and, and the best music and everybody's just, oh, great, and then they leave and are jerks on the parking lot and the way out. That's not what we're called to do and that's what we've done. You know, you put up a sign so people come to your church uh, and then you feel good about yourself. And that's not what we're called to do. If we had been effective in making disciples, we would be in a very different world situation. That being said, we have made disciples because 
the world hasn't completely gone to hell in a handbasket, right? We we have still have a lot of great people doing a lot of good things, Christian and non-Christian, because we are all made in the good image of God. We are all imbued with our Creator's love, and all of us have that provenient grace that calls us back home to do good things, to love one another. And so we're not without hope. The world isn't uh, lost without help. Humans aren't inherently evil. We are inherently good. But the discipleship making model is an intense one because it involves all of us. We can't just show up to church and hope we're making disciples. What's it take to make disciples? An investment of your time, your talents, your treasures. It takes relationships. That's why I'm very big at our church, and we're going to be working on this moving forward. It's really about intergenerational connection. Why are most of our churches in the United States older? Because our older generations haven't connected with the younger generations. Well, they had their kids, their grandkids, and that's it. But to really grow as a church, to really make disciples, we have to be connected intergenerationally. We have to be learning from each other, mentoring each other, teaching each other, and being ex- being able to take teaching and mentoring from younger generations, myself included. And when we do that, we start to all become disciples because we all have somewhere to grow. We can all love more. We can all experience Christ more. We can all be the church more. And that's one of our major calls. If you're confused about, oh, where's Christ calling me? Christ is calling you to make disciples to change the world. Christ is calling you back home into union to love more, to be more. Friends, today we come to our time of prayer with praise and thanksgiving, coming to God just filled with joy and hope. Let us take a moment of silence, thanking God. List as many things you are thankful for until you can't think of anything else. Let us give thanks. And now, friends, let's join in the doxology. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God, above ye heavenly host. Praise, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.